Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture on the uh, theory of structure. So we have this new topic here, we have trust deflection using virtual work method. So if you remember in our previous videos, we learned how to compute deflection and rotation of beam using virtual work method. But in this video, we will be focusing on the trust deflection. And if you missed to watch those previous videos, I have posted the link in the description below. In um, the general equations in computing for the deflection of thrust, we will be using the actual deformation in which um, during your strength of materials, we learned that deformation is basically equal to the actual deformation or actual load times the length of the member over the cross-sectional area times the modulus of elasticity. So we will be using this again in computing for the deflection of thrust because as we all know, thrust is subjected by a actual load P. Okay, but in this case, we have uh, two actual loads. We have actual load due to virtual system. Then we have the actual load due to the real uh, system. And if we have change in temperature, as we all know, if our temperature increases then there would also be an increase in the length of our member okay so we will just be using the the virtual system actual load or actual forces that is acting on the beam or on the truss rather times the coefficient of thermal expansion of the material or of the member times the change in temperature times the original length of our member so this would be the general equations in computing for deflection so in this case if we do not have change in temperature we can um, basically we can just cancel this out okay if we do not have um, temperature change on the structure okay so again um, the same procedure with our beam in which we need to draw the virtual system and analyze the virtual system of the structure. Now let's go directly to an example. So we have this truss structure here in which we are asked to compute the vertical deflection at B. And then there is a temperature change of 50 degrees Celsius that is positive in the middle member at B, D. Since we are asked for vertical deflection, so in our virtual system, we will be using a one unit vertical load at point B. But if we are asked to compute for the horizontal deflection, so, so we will be using a horizontal one unit load at point B. Okay, so but in this case, since we have vertical deflection, so we use a one unit vertical load in our virtual system and which acts at point B. But uh, we have to take note of the temperature change because this temperature change here can also affect the deflection at that certain point. Okay, so, but uh, first thing foremost, we are going to compute first the reactions at the support. So since we have hinge and ruler, so we have uh, three supports in total. So we have um, support at A, we have here. R A Y and we also have R A X and at support C we have of course R C Y. So to compute for the reactions we can first sum up moment at C is equal to zero. So counterclockwise a uh, moment are positive. So we have negative R A Y time six, then we have minus one hundred times four plus 100 times 3 so this is the vertical load and this is the horizontal load and then that and that ends our equation so we have to equate this to 0 so our ay here should give us negative 16.667 kilonewton this negative here denotes that we have incorrect assumption of the direction of our ray so instead this should be acting downward okay so we change the direction and we delete the sign so therefore we have here 16.667 so that is acting downward 
Then for our CY, we can just sum up forces vertical is equal to zero. Upward force are positive. That is, we have R A Y, that is negative plus R C Y minus one hundred equals to zero. So R C Y is equal to R A Y here is sixteen point six six seven, and then plus. 100 this should give us the value of rcy equals to of course we have 116.667 kilo newton so this is the reaction at support c and then we i'm going to compute for the reaction or the horizontal reaction so we can just sum up forces horizontal is equal to zero so all the force acting to the right are positive. So we have here negative R A X plus 100 is equal to zero. That means we have R A X here is equal to 100 kilonewton. And this one is acting to the left. That is we have here 100 kilonewton. And we can now go to the computation of actual forces on each member so we can divide this into members and we all know that we have five members we have member a b b c c d a d and b d so we compute for the actual forces or for the internal forces okay f and we use a joint method or you can use um, any method to compute for these internal forces but but here um, we use a joint method and we begin at point A, so at joint A. So if we draw the free body diagram of joint A, we have a reaction which is going downward. That is 16.667. And then we also have a 100 kilonewton that is acting to the left. Okay, let's say that one. And we also have the force of AD and we assume that force AD is in tension that is acting away from joint A. So we have this one. Let's say that's our force of member AD. And we have a mem force of member AB and we assume that that member there is acting in tension and that is acting away from joint A. So we have here force a b okay so we are going to compute for um, these unknown forces a d and a b so the first thing we do here is we can sum up forces vertical so we have summation of forces vertical is equal to zero all the forces acting upwards are positive so we have here negative 16.667 then plus the vertical component of FAD, the vertical component, let's say it's our FAD vertical. And we can use trigonometry to this one, but to make it shorter, so we know that um, FAD has a component of 3 horizontal and 4 vertical. So by Pythagorean theorem, we have 5 hypotenuse here. Okay, so since if we have this is 4 and this is 3, so we can compute the value of the hypotenuse equals to the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is basically equal to 5. Okay, so we have plus FAD times the, to compute for the vertical component, we just need to use sine of theta. If this is our theta, we have 4 over 5 correct that is opposite over the hypotenuse so fad is sine theta and this equals to 0 so we have negative 16.667 uh, plus fad so you can just um, change the sine theta to 4 over 5 so we have times 4 over 5 equals to 0 so we have fad here which is equal to 20.834 kilo newton and since we came up positive answer that means our assumption that fad is intention is actually correct so therefore this one is intention
Now for FAB, we can use summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero, so all the forces acting to the right are positive. So we have negative 100 plus the horizontal component of FAD, which is we multiply this one into uh, we multiply this one by 3 over 5 then plus FAB and this equals to 0 and that is since we have already computed the value of FAD so we have plus 20.834 times 3 over 5 plus FAB equals to 0 and that we can say that AB here or the force at AB is basically equal to positive 87.5 kilo newton and since we have positive answer fab here since we assume that fab is in tension since we came up as positive that means this answer here is in tension we have correct assumption okay so we have now the value of fad and fab so we can uh, tabulate these two values in our table fad is 20.8 3, 4. This is positive since this one is in tension. Okay, and that the unit is in terms of kilonewton. And then for AB, we have 87.5. Again, this is positive because that is in tension as well. So we are already done with FAB and FAD. So we can now compute for the internal um, forces of FBC by looking at at joint B so we have at joint B so our free body diagram would be this one so since we have already known that that force AB is in tension so we can use its correct direction in which it is in tension and we already know that FAB is equal to 87.5 and we also have the vertical force and we assume that one as that it's in tension okay this is the force of member BD and we also have the force of member BC okay so these two forces BD and BC are unknown so we can um, compute FBC here by just summing up forces in horizontal direction and this equals to zero assuming that all the force acting to the right are positive so we have negative FAB plus FBC is equal to zero so therefore we can say that FBC is basically equal to FAB so therefore FBC is equal to 87.5 kilonewton at the same time and since we came up positive so therefore our assumption that BC is in tension is actually correct so this is in tension that is positive and to compute for BD we can just sum up forces vertical is equal to zero so upward forces are positive so we have FBD and we do not have external loads at joint B so we can just equate BD here equal to zero so our FBD is equal to zero so we do not have actual load at BD okay so we can tabulate these values so at BD we have a zero actual load and for BC we have 87.5 this is again in tension so therefore we have a positive value so we are now done with BD so we move to member DC so we can use joint C so at joint C we have the free body diagram we have um, a reaction which is acting upward that is we have 116.667 okay and we also have BC which we have already known and we have already know that that the force BC is in tension and the value is 87.5 so we have FBC is equal to 87.5 and lastly we have DC and let's assume that DC there is in compression that's only an assumption guys okay so therefore it's FDC
Okay? So our goal here is to compute for FDC. So we can just sum up forces. You can use either vertical force or horizontal force in equilibrium. But um, I'm pre I prefer to use vertical. So this is equal to zero. So upward force are positive. So we have 116.667. Now the vertical component of FDC. So we have component 3 horizontal for vertical and 5 um, hypotenuse. So therefore we have minus FDC times 4 over 5 and this equals to 0. So we have FDC is equal to 145.834 kilonewton. Since we came up positive answer, there, therefore our assumption that FDC is in compression is correct. So therefore, this is in compression. Okay? Again, we have positive answer. So we can tabulate the value of CD in which we have 145.834. Since this is in compression, therefore we use negative. And now we are done with the real system. So we compute for the actual forces for our virtual system. So we have F v which is in terms of kilo newton so we can redraw this figure here again for our um, virtual system we eliminate all the external loads okay and we put a one unit load at point b since we are asked to compute for the vertical deflection that means we use vertical one unit load at point b so we put a one unit load here okay and again we compute for the reactions first okay so we have here r a y and we have here r c y so we can actually sum up moment at C and this equals to zero so counterclockwise are positive so we have negative R A Y times of course we have a six moment arm plus one times three is equal to zero so R A Y is equal to one half okay so this is one half and then we have summation of forces vertical is equal to zero so upward force are positive that means we have r a y plus r c y minus one and this is equal to zero and we have known already that the value of r a y is one half plus r c y minus one is equal to zero so we can compute rcy is equal to one half rcy here is one half so we are going to compute for rax we have horizontal reaction at point a since this is a hinge support so we have summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero but since we do not have horizontal external load in our structure so therefore we can say that rax is automatically equal to zero so we can now compute the uh, the forces on each member of our structure and that is we compute for fv so we begin at joint a okay joint a so we have um act external load which is acting upward so we have one half we also have the force of member AD in which we assume that that one is in let's say that's in compression okay let's say it's our F V A D and we also have the um, forces of member AB in which we assume that that is in tension let's say it's our F V A B again we do not have R A X rx here is equal to zero okay this is equal to zero so we can compute here first the value of fvad by just subbing up forces vertical and this equals to zero so upward force are positive so we have one half 
minus FVAD, okay? And we know that the component is 3 horizontal, 4 vertical, and 5 hypotenuse. So to compute for the vertical component, we multiply this one by 4 over 5. And this equals to 0. So we have FVAD here, which is equal to, we have 5 over 8, okay? So we have 5 over 8. And since we have positive answer, therefore, this is um, our assumption that FVAD is in compression is correct. So therefore, this is in compression. To compute for FVAB, so we can just sum up forces horizontal is equal to zero. Forces acting horizontal um, to the right are positive. So we have FVAB, okay, minus FVAD times we have 3 over 5 and this equals to 0. So we have already computed the value of FVAD which is 5 over 8. And then we multiply it by 3 over 5. So therefore our FVAB is equal to 3 over 8. And since we have positive answer, our assumption that FVAB is in tension is correct. So therefore, this is in tension. So we um, tabulate this value of AD and AB. So we have, we have for AD, we have 5 over 8. For AB, we have 3 over 8. So we are now done with AD and AB. Okay? So we cannot proceed at joint B. So at joint B, we have free body diagram. We have one unit load which is going downward. And we have AB, which we know that that is in tension. Okay, that is we have FVAB. We have also um, FVBC, but we assume that that is in tension as well. So we have FVBC. And we have F. VBD, which is we assume that that is in tension. So we have FVBD. We have already computed the value of FVAB, which is 3 over 8, correct? So to compute for FVBC, we just sum up forces horizontal is equal to 0. So right force are positive. So that means we have negative FVAB plus F V B C and this is equal to zero. So F V B C is equal to F V A B and we have here three over eight. So this is in tension. So to compute for F V B D we can just sum up forces vertical is equal to zero. So upward force are positive. So we have F V B D uh, minus one is equal to zero. So we have F V B D is equal to one. Okay, so we have now A, B, and B, D, which are 3 over 8 and 1 respectively. So we have now the value of F, V, B, C, and F, V, B, D, which are 3 over 8 and 1 respectively. Okay, so F, V, B, D is in tension as well. So 3 over 8 for B, C, and 1 for B, D. So we have one member remaining, that is F, D, C. Okay, so we can just uh, use joint C. So at joint C, we have a reaction of one half going upward. We have BC, which is in tension, okay, and the value is in 3 over 8, correct? This is FVBC. And we assume that our FDC is in compression, okay? So we have FVDC. So we can just sum up force vertical is equal to zero. Upward force are positive. So we have um, one half minus FVDC, the vertical component, which is four over five, and this equals to zero. So we have FVDC is equal to 5 over 8. Okay, and this is in compression. 
So FCD is 5 over 8. Again, this is negative because this is in compression. And the same as with AD, which is in compression as well. So they are both um, negative. So as what you can see, we have a symmetrical member. That means all the force on its opposite side are the same in value. Okay, because they are symmetrical with respect to the y axis. And then we tabulate the length of each member. So we know that AB is 3 meters upon looking at the, um, the diagram. So we have 3. BC is also 3 meters as well. So this one. CD is in 5 meters. Okay, since this is in 3 is to 4 to 5. AD is 5 meters as well. And lastly, we have a BD, which is 4 meters. And then we tabulate the area. Now for area, um, we have given 1,000 square millimeter for all members. So we will be using this value for all members. Unless if there is different um, values for every member. So you use a different value for this. But since this is a uniform cross-section for all members. So we will be using here 1,000 for all members. So we have 1,000. Again, this is in millimeters squared. So 1,000 for BC, 1,000 for CD, 1,000 for AD, and lastly, 1,000 for BD. And for the type of material, since for our modulus of elasticity, we have 200,000 megapascal. So this is a steel modulus of elasticity. So we will be using that one. For modulus of elasticity, we have, let's say this is in 10 raised to the 3 megapascal. So we have 200. That is, since we have already put 10 raised to the 3 on the row. So we have 200 here all throughout. So this is 200 gigapascal or 200,000 megapascal. Now, going back to the problem, we have a temperature change on member BD. And the temperature change is positive 50 degrees Celsius. That means we have increasing temperature. So therefore, our member BD would elongate. Okay, so we tabulate our temperature change. And we only have BD, which is positive 50 degree. Again, this is in degree Celsius. So AB to AD are all zero degree Celsius. So there are no change in that temperature. So we are now done tabulating all the necessary, necessary values for the computation of deformation. So we can now um, compute these members individually. Okay, so we begin at AB. So we compute for the deformation for each member, which is in millimeters. Okay, First we begin with uh, member AB. For member AB, okay, deflection of member AB, we have again the, sum, the deformation FV times FL over AE plus the change in temperature or that the change in length due to temperature, we have D, the coefficient of thermal expansion, the change in temperature times the length. So we have the deformation of AB is equal to FV here is 3 over 8 times F, that is 87.5, okay, and this is in kilonewton times the length, length is in 3 meters. So therefore, we multiply 1,000 to change kilonewton into newton and multiply again by 1,000 to change meter to millimeters. Okay, so we can cancel kilonewton and meter here. Over the area, area is 1,000 square millimeters, correct? Times the modulus of elasticity, which is 200 times 10 raised to the 3 megapascal can be expressed as 
newton per square millimeter. So we can cancel out newton and millimeter square. The remaining would be in terms of millimeter. So therefore, the change in the length of member AB is equal to 0 0.492 millimeters. So we tabulate this one in row AB, so we have 0 0.492. But since we do not have change in temperature, so we can equate this equal to 0. So we can cancel the deformation due to change in temperature. And now for member BC, we have um, still 3 over 8 times 87.5 times the length at 3, so we multiply it by 1,000 squared to convert to Newton millimeter and then the area which is 1,000 and then the modulus of elasticity of 200 times 10 raised to the 3. So we would have the deflection BC is equal to 0 0.492 millimeters okay so we have here 0 0.492 for member bc and for member cd we have negative 5 over 8 times negative 145.834 multiplied by the length 5 we multiply 1,000 squared to convert to Newton millimeter over, we have the area 1,000 times the modulus of elasticity, 200 times 10 raised to the 3. And this would give us 2.279 millimeters. Okay, so we have 2.279 millimeters. For member AD, so we have the deformation of AD is equal to negative 5 over 8 times 20.834 times 5 times 1,000 squared, okay, over the area which is 1,000 times the modulus of elasticity which is 200 times 10 raised to the 3. This would give us negative 0 0.326, so that is in millimeter. So we have negative 0 0.326. And then we have the deformation BD. We have here 1 times 0 times the length of 4,000 over 1,000 times 200,000. However, again, we have a zero force here, so basically this equals to zero. But take note, we have a change in temperatures. So therefore, our only deformation or only factor that caused the deformation of BD is just the temperature change. That is deformation due to that change in temperature. So we will be using here the formula again. We have F, F, V, times the um, thermal expansion times the change in the temperature times the length. So for BD, we have 1 times the coefficient of thermal expansion which is from the given, we have 12 times 10 raised to negative 6 over degree Celsius. 12 times 10 raised to negative 6 over degree Celsius times positive 50 degrees Celsius times the length of BD which is 4 so we can use 4000 here directly since so that we have millimeter as our unit and we can cancel out degree Celsius so therefore the change in the length of BD is equal to 2.4 millimeter okay so we tabulate this at BD, so we have 2.4 millimeter. And we can sum up all the um, deformations. So we add all these deformations and we have 
the answer 5.337 millimeter so this is now the vertical deflection at point B okay so this is now our answer so we can say then that our truss would deflect like this one in which there is a vertical and horizontal movement of B let's say it's our B prime so the vertical is 5.337 so to compute for the horizontal displacement so you just need to um, use a one unit horizontal load at point B okay so that's how you compute for the deflection so you can try to solve it on your own you try to compute the horizontal movement at C by using one unit load which is acting horizontal to the um, right direction or you can also compute the vertical and horizontal displacement at point D by using both the vertical and horizontal one unit load and that ends our lesson on the deformation on the deflection of thrust using virtual work method and thank you guys for listening so i hope that you have learned something and i hope to see you on my next video but please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell thank you guys and god bless